Good day, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know that I wrote a book on the Society of St. Pius X? You probably did if you've ever watched my show before. I talk about it often. <laughs> By the way, thank you to the thousands of people who have purchased that book, and uh, the response has been overwhelming, and may it help to spread the truth about the great Arch Archbishop and his Society of Priests. Well, maybe you didn't know, but Archbishop Vigano has spoken very fondly of Archbishop Lefebvre. And um, if you're not sure who Bishop Vigano is, maybe you're not. I doubt it if you're tuning into my channel. But if you're not, he was a papal nuncio for the United States under Pope Benedict. Uh, he sort of went into a quiet, almost retired life for a while. And with the 2018 McCarrick stuff, he sort of blew the roof off of that. And he's become pretty famous ever since. He was um, He's released his letters all the time. I shouldn't say famous in the sense of, you know, seeking fame. I just mean he's become so influential and... He said a lot of strong things that many of our bishops won't say, so it's refreshing to hear them. And thanks, and thank you, and uh, God bless Bishop Vigano for that. Well, it is true that in the past, Bishop Vigano was not a traditionalist. He said the Novus Ordo. He was just, you know, a conservative priest, and that's the way it was. And ever since he kind of had his awakening to the corruption and crisis in the church, he has become much more traditional to the point where those who know him say he's eschewed the new mass. And he actually wrote about that saying basically the, the Novus Ordo should be abolished. Um, he's basically said that Vatican II is a failed experiment, needs to be kind of put in the dustbin of history. And he also has come out in support of the good Archbishop Lefebvre. And I have that here in my book, SSPX, The Defense. You can see it on the screen there as well. Uh, defense spelt with a C because we're using the King's English. And um, this is actually near the end of my book. And um, this is an answer to a question that Archbishop Vigano had given to um, a group of students. And they were asking about Archbishop Lefebvre. And uh, here's what he said. He said, I can only look at the Archbishop with admiration and much gratitude for his fidelity and courage. Archbishop Lefebvre must be seen as a holy man, not as a schismatic as a fervent missionary and confessor of the faith, a zealous defender of tradition, the priesthood, and the Catholic Mass. He exposed himself to severe sanctions, up to and including excommunication, because he felt that it was more right to obey God than man, to guard and transmit tradition rather than embrace modernist doctrines. His is a life given to God and the preaching uh, of sound doctrine, to the celebration of the holy sacrifice and to the formation of young men called to the priesthood. Some consider the 1988 consecrations as a quote-unquote step too far. Others recognize a vital necessity for the safeguarding of the Mass of all time. Archbishop Lefebvre grasped the urgency of the times in which we live and the drama of a situation that has worsened and taken on new accents of gravity in recent years, making more evident the state of exception in which we find ourselves. Some speak of disobedience, we speak of fidelity. Thank you, Archbishop Vigano. Again, that's in my book, SSPX, The Defense. You can find it in the description to this video. So in Archbishop Vigano's opinion, some speak of disobedience when it comes to the Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, where some speak, where he says, we speak of fidelity. And it's very interesting the way that he mentions the word excommunication, basically exposing himself to the potentiality of excommunication. And this is interesting because a lot of the time I think people believe that excommunications or suspensions and things like that are almost like a sacrament or a, a magic spell. Uh, they're a legal penalty and they're either valid or invalid or they're just or unjust. Even if they're legally done, even if they're listed in their application, which I argue in my book that the um, excommunication of Archbishop Lefebvre was not done according to the legal process, which was unjust otherwise, but nonetheless, it actually does look like it was done pretty poorly. That aside, something can be done legally, but still be unjust. We know this in our society. You have a speed limit. You drive 100 kilometers an hour on the highway if you're in Ontario. If your wife is pregnant and, you know, in labor and you got to get on the highway to get to the hospital, you drive 150. If a police officer pulls you over, he's probably going to say, Oh, darn, 
follow me. Let's both go 150 together and I'll lead you with my lights on so we can get there safer. People understand that laws have their exceptions, and they always do. And this would apply to laws of the church as well, of course. This is a pretty simple concept for a lot of people, but some just don't seem to understand that canon law is not like the Book of Mormon. It's not just dictated to some prophet and we have to follow it until it changes or until the uh, the revelation of the the master of the church changes or whatever. These things deal with principles of Catholic doctrine, divine law, and natural law, and they try to encapsulate them in a way that is a systematic formulation to govern the church. It's not even really that old, the code of canon law. Um, it's not something that existed in a universal sense about 100 years ago. It's actually quite modern in the church's history. So in the case of Archbishop Lefebvre, Bishop Vigano says, yeah, he opened himself up to a legal penalty, but Sometimes that happens, and if the legal penalty is unjust, then it's not a- applicable. Um, so, if you want to know more about Archbishop Lefebvre, and not just what Bishop Vigano said, I have citations from Bishop Snyder, various cardinals and bishops from the 70s and 80s, popes, Cardinal Gagnon, um, and others. So, as always, let me know what you think in the comments. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time. God bless.